one more act to go. I hope, hope you enjoyed it so far. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, um, again, we're still looking terrified. <laughs> right. uh, again, let's have some love in the room. Love, love, love. love. Applause, cheering, and please, please, my voice. I'm Exarmy, the British one. As a recent convert to Islam, when I tell people I fought in Iraq, I find it helps to clarify which side I was on. I'm a pretty rubbish Muslim. Every time I'm in the bar and someone offers me a drink, I get a little bit of Islamic amnesia. And that said, when you, uh, you're not that scared of eternal damnation in hellfire when you're already in Weatherspoons. I come from a long line of soldiers. My granddad was catering corps, my dad was in the band, I joined the intelligence. More highly decorated soldiers in the Salvation Army. <laughs> and there's guys with more combat experience in the Jesus Army. <laughs> I always thought Army intelligence, that's only going to recruit former Special Forces commandos, cream of British University graduates, your typical James Bond types. Turns out, quite happy with two years of McDonald's, GCSE art and prescription glasses. <laughs> The rest of the army didn't like as much. He used to accuse us of having all the brains and no common sense. Maybe. But I spent most of my time in a warm and cosy nuclear bunker in home counties while they're getting shot at by hairy fellas and dusty fur world titles. <laughs> I think the jury might still be out on that one. The train was tough. I really struggled with the swimming test. I also found it a bit pointless. If you need to swim 50 metres or more in Iraq, Congratulations, <laughs> you've just invaded Iran. <laughs> Not much language training either. I was quite surprised when I went to the Middle East to find they all spoke this thing called Arabic. But the army had planned ahead and got me an interpreter from Glasgow. <laughs> so I learned Arabic. Uh, the job was alright, a bit of a strange one. Most of the time we were left to our own devices. Now and again someone would disturb our crossword, usually to ask us a question or something. We'd gather around a table and collectively guess the answer. We're effectively just a well-armed pub quiz team. <laughs> Army intelligence has been in the spotlight a lot recently. Got the media coverage of apparent torture by British troops in Iraq. I went on the Guardian website, take a look at some of the evidence. Saw a video with soldiers shouting at Iraqis. At the end of the video, an expert comes on. He informs us that shouting is torture. Alright, oh, Sharon's torture, is it? That means my mum must have been a serial torturer. I think she was right up there with Pol Pot, Hitler, and whoever commissions new programmes at ITV2. And on the subject of ITV2, what the fuck is that all about? What kind of TV executive sat there and said, Do you know what? I think the British public would really like something a little bit shitter than Channel 5. <laughs> and the strangest thing, it was spot on. Seems just. Seems a Jeremy Card audience has still got an appetite for cutting edge television after 8 pm. <laughs> anyway, back to the torture. No, no evidence of the British using really nasty stuff like waterboarding. That's an American technique requiring a modicum of skill and training. Your British squad is more likely to rely on the tried and tested old favourites. Your wedgie, your nipple twist, or your Chinese burns. Of course, we never did any of that. We just hang by their ankles from a helicopter at 2,000 feet. I'm <laughs> 1,000 feet. <laughs> Government's latest plans is to fast track ex soldiers into teaching. Could make the national curriculum a little more interesting. Today in GCSE chemistry, we're going to develop a new nerve agent. In art and design, we're going to come up with a colour scheme that will be blended into the trans Eurasian planes. <laughs> and in drama, we're going to teach you how to perform a new war crimes trial. <laughs> In, in fairness, the youth of today are trouble enough. Do we really want to train them how to establish effective kill zones? <laughs> On Friday night, some parts of Luton are going to start to resemble 1940s stabbing grass. <laughs> Although, where Luton's concerned, that ain't going to take much to it. Yeah. Yeah, a strange place, Luton. We've already touched on it tonight. Only place where you can mention it anywhere in the English, Hindi, or Urdu world and get a fucking groan. <laughs> That's why the Luton van's going down the shitter. They just rebranded it, let's work Garden City van. We'll all be fucking driving one. <laughs> oh, the terrible squad, he never quite got it right. 
try to do all the usual squatty things. Got to two. Got picked up one day in England. That was a plan. Unfortunately, the artist used a slightly fancy script. Now, from a distance, it don't so much look like England, more like Edward. <laughs> so when I'm topless on the beach, rather than looking like some savage football yob, it's more like a gay homage to a former lover. <laughs>